Okay, we'll continue our uh, Q and A uh, with the winning driver of today's race, and that is Tyler Reddick. If you have a question for Tyler, please raise your hand, and we'll start up front to uh, with Holly. Congratulations, Tyler. When we spoke on Friday, you seemed pretty optimistic, pretty confident about it. If you could just kind of talk about then being able to pull that off and certainly restart after restart after restart, that's it's pretty tough to maintain like you did. It, it was, um, and I, I honestly wasn't doing the best job on those restarts. Uh, you know, a few of the times, giving up one, two spots, um, and all but that very last one, I'm having to battle for position uh, down into the S's, which is a very tricky area of the racetrack considering track limits and all those things. You know, one bump, one thing goes wrong, you might be getting penalized. So definitely putting ourselves at risk there. So, you know, if I have one thing looking at, at the whole weekend, I could, wish I could have done better, would have been qualifying and um, just cleaned up those restarts a little bit. So, you know, just there, there is things to learn for sure, but uh, it all went really well. And the last one um, got, got off a of turn, uh, turn one uh, without any real, uh, you know, threats. Go to Steven in the center. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, Steven Stump, frontstroke.com. Uh, congrats on the win, Tyler. Um, also, um, during the Saturday media sessions, you said that while talking about the newcomers, Taylor, Kimmy, Button, you said, hopefully we race with respect out there. It often goes away in these fin on restarts and these finishes. Obviously, you were in front of it all, but what are your thoughts on what happened behind you? I have no idea. I was just focusing on uh, my restarts and what I had going on. Obviously, there was a lot of cautions at the end, but um, I mean, it's just the way that things kind of have progressed, you know, the, fr the front and rear bumpers of this car are really resilient. Um, you can really hit someone pretty, pretty, pretty hard without knocking the nose of your car off. Um, and the rear bumpers are really tough too. So, uh, you know, we saw that at the clash, people just being able to go in there and lean on each other front to rear. Um, so um, it kind of brings that to light at the end of these races. Um, but, but seriously though, you know, you look at turn one here, turn one at Indy Road Course, um, they're very inviting corners with a lot of room and you know, it's just a product of of restarts and the nature of NASCAR racing and how aggressive um, All the drivers are someone's gonna be on the short end Go to Bob Jim Rob uh, Bob Parkers Fox Sports. I'm curious Hi, I'm curious about how like what what is your like vibe in the car, are you nervous? Like I'm, I'm wondering, was your stomach worse today <laughs> during those last restarts <laughs> no, I, than a week thankfully, ago? Thankfully, I, I'd had um, things had returned to normal this morning, of all things. So it was good timing. I'm feeling a lot better. Um, yeah, the only thing that you know that was really on my mind today was just how it kind of hang on. Um, we've been having some issues with uh, the cool shirt plugging in, and, and unfortunately today, uh, from lap one, we could never get it plugged in. So it was a little bit warm in the car. The shirt got pretty hot. But um, I was able to hold on to the end, and thankfully we didn't have one one last overtime finish. I may have been in trouble. Yeah. Well, I guess I mean, are you calm? I mean, is it like? I mean, uh, at times certainly. You know, um, I think before we had all those cautions with like ten to go or whatever, I'd finally gotten back around William. I'd kind of settled in. Definitely hot, but um, I was you know comfortable with the car and everything. Um, but certainly as we kind of got to the end, you know. Um, I gotten warm again, my ice had melted. Um, so yeah, I was getting a little hot in the car, but uh, I was, by the time we were taking the restart, kind of gotten back to being where my heart rate and calmness needed to be to focus. Uh, I wouldn't say nervous. Um, just, just the stress was high in the car today, just the circumstances. Um, but, but thankfully not, not too high. Still able to execute and get the job done. I mean. I, didn't quite get every restart done perfectly, um, but you know we, we got the ones that that, that mattered the last one. Jim, <clears throat> Jim Motor Motorsport um, In regards to the start to your season, uh, Billy and Denny had talked about you know the bad optics of having it in your points position and so forth, but that you guys 
felt you still had speed. From your perspective, was it been frustrating, disappointing, or how did how have you kind of handled the beginning of the year? I mean, it's just it's just racing, honestly. That's all it was. Um, you know, it's just how racing can be sometimes. Um, you look at what happened, and it wasn't like, well, we just flat out sucked this weekend. It wasn't wasn't a this or that. It was just uh, circumstances, and yeah, some some of it was mistakes that were made or, or things that we could have definitely done better. But you know, they were all things we could learn from. And in the grand scheme of things, when you have the entire year in front of you, you know, it's it's good to learn from things early in the year, so they don't, you know, if things if it comes later on down the road, um, you know, you, I'd rather have that these things go wrong early than later on. So, um, <clears throat> for me, uh, you know, it didn't really affect me, and from my perspective in the shop. Uh, it didn't seem to be affecting the team. You know, we just kept focusing, okay, next weekend, we're going to bring the best car that we can and start over and go from there. Certainly, you know, there was some, the only frustration I would say that we had was just when we would have a bad weekend or something go wrong, you know, it, it really screw up our qualifying metric for the following weekend and put us in a tough spot to be able to qualify well and, and start better. So that was the only only part of it that was slightly frustrating, um, but nothing, nothing crazy. Rob? Rob Tianson from thepodiumfinish.net. Tyler, congratulations on your victory today. A couple of questions for you. I mean, how validating is this to get this victory with, for 23-11, given how much confidence and belief that Philly and Denny had, uh, Hamlin had in you? And also, too, just how did you kind of handle the emotional side of the intense battles you had today? Um, uh, yeah, you just, just got to remove emotion from your thought. Um, if you're, you're you're being emotional in a moment. Um, you can't you can't have the mental clarity to get the job done. Just have to remove all that from your brain. Um, as much as yes, it can be frustrating to have caution after caution, and oh you know, man, I almost made it back to the start finish line, and it didn't go our way. You just just have to remove all that from your from your brain. It's done and over with, and you got to reset and be ready to go uh, for the next restart because everybody behind you is, you know, grinding their teeth and doing everything they can to get a uh, an edge on you. Uh, you know, you can't can't be feeling bad for yourself. You have to get back to work and execute and just do it again. Go in the back and then up in the middle here. Uh, hey, hey, Tyler, Trey Campbell here of uh, Sports Talk 790 um, in Houston. There were obviously a lot of green-white checkered attempts there at the end. Uh, would you be opposed to NASCAR stepping in and limiting the green-white checkers like they did back in 05 when they instituted the rule? No, we'd be robbing the fans of a, of a finish, and that's what they deserve. They deserve a good finish to the end. They deserve to see us make it back to the white flag, and um, whatever happens after that, yeah, I think the rule the way it is is the way it should be. You know, the, the fans pay a lot of good money to come out here and, and watch a good finish, watch a great race. Uh, we deserve to put that on there. Out, we, put, we deserve to put that product out there for the fans. Howdy, Tyler. Wyatt Watson with FrontStretch.com. Uh, congratulations on the win. Um, you are obviously the fastest driver and the fastest car this week, this whole weekend. Uh, I want to get your comments on bringing that speed to Toyota, which last year obviously struggled very mightily on the road courses, and just uh, what you'll bring to all the road courses next for the rest of the season, actually. What was that last part? Sorry about the rest of the road courses? Uh, what what talent you're going to bring to the rest of the road courses this this year? What ta talent? Uh, what I didn't speed, know. Speed, 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 speed. Um, yeah, hopefully it applies. Um, obviously, you know every road course is, is kind of its own animal. Um, but the braking zones that we have here, you know, there's a lot of time to be made and loss um, in the braking zones here. Um, and I feel like when you go to Indy Road Course, some of that similarities uh, apply. Not as much elevation gain or loss. Um, you know, Chicago Street Course and the layout that it has, um, you know, get, being really good in the braking zones and not making mistakes and going wide will be really critical uh, with the tight corners and the tight narrow confines racing on the street. You miss a braking zone, well, there's nowhere to go. You're going to go into a wall. So uh, things that we were strong with today hopefully will apply in some ways to those other places. But in no way do we, do we get, like, super comfortable or, or, you know, content with how we did. You know, we're going to look at how we could we be better, what things could we clean up. I definitely could have done some things better on the end of this race on restarts. Um, but certainly to go from where we were um, at the test in January, the tire test here, how we stacked up against, you know, 
uh, the eight, the eight car, Kyle Busch and Austin Sendrick in the two uh, to make the gains that we did um, and make our cars better uh, it was certainly a really good sign. Um, obviously, I would love to see all the Toyotas get better and, and certainly we're all gonna work together and, and share notes and hopefully get up, get the rest of them up there soon. So uh, good step good step in the right direction. You know, like I said, it was a really big point of emphasis for myself coming into here to, to try and help Toyota get better on the road courses. Um, and, and yeah, I'd say that was a success. Go well, Steven, Dustin, and then wrap up with Bob. Hi Tyler, one more, oh, hi Tyler, one more question. Um, it seems like a while ago now, but in the middle of the race towards the end, you and Byron had that battle. You guys were on separate strategies. Um, pitting, making your way back to the lead, and so on. Now that you've seen it in action, uh, what what is your opinion on having the no stage cautions at the road courses? Well, um, you know, it certainly allows the race to play out more naturally, um, which I feel like in the spirit of road course racing, um, in my opinion, that's what it should be more about. You know, we, we had the natural cautions towards the end there with people having tire failures and issues to bring out cautions to have the exciting green-white checkered finishes. Um, but, you know, like we saw in the truck race, um, like we kind of saw in the Xfinity race, you know, I think allowing the race to play out naturally just is, is to me, it's what road course racing is about. You look at other forms of motorsport that have road course races, not always as they're exciting, you know, finish at the end or, or you know, the stage racing, obviously. So um, from my perspective, I, I enjoyed it more uh, this this today. Um, you know, it was about maximizing your pace on the racetrack and, not, and, and minimizing the mistakes uh, because depending on what strategy you had, um, you know, if, if you made a mistake, uh-oh, if you made a mistake, um, you're going to be costing yourself track position as the race just played out. Go ahead, Dustin. Dustin Albino, Jade Ski, Tyler, I know this probably seems like a really long time ago, but what was going through your mind early in the race when you made that first pit stop and were mired deep in the field? Um, you know, it's some concern just... The initial first couple of laps, Joey got by, um, Austin Dillon got by, but you know, just kind of recenter myself. And I remember AJ literally, you know, getting stuck behind Eric Almarola yesterday, stopped on the racetrack, and he fought back from it and won. So, obviously, this is the Cup Series, not the Xfinity Series. But you know, I, I looked at how that played out. It's like, all right, we can we can overcome this. We can make it happen. And just for the most part, as the race was playing out before those cautions at the end, it was the right calls, the right strategy. I think. Um, you know, having having a strong car really helps whatever strategy you go with work. But, um, you know, just with the pace of off and everything, I think the strategy we're on, we were on was, was going to work out better. But, um, yeah, it was it was enjoyable for sure. We'll wrap up here with Bob. Uh, Bob Hockris, Fox Sports. Was it weird and or extra motivating to have the eight car that you're battling for the win? Um, you know, I... Kyle races with a lot of respect. I know he gets a bad rap from, from a number of fans out there, but um, pretty much from day one coming into the Cup Series, um, Kyle's, Kyle and I have raced with really, really well around each other uh, for the last couple of years. I knew he was going to give everything he had, um, and I knew that team would, but, but certainly, you know, um, you, you heard him talk about it, right? Like just the respect in the garage not being what it used to be, um, and he's one of the few drivers that, that certainly really – still races with that honor and integrity and, and wants to, you know, race fair, race hard, race clean. So, um, you know, I knew he wasn't going to do anything too crazy. You know, there was other cars lined up behind me uh, throughout the day that I was very concerned about a dive bomb or a bump or something like that. But uh, when you got one of the best in the business behind you and Kyle, you know, you're going to get raced really hard and you have to execute perfectly, um, but it's going to be really, really clean. All right, Tyler, congratulations and uh, appreciate the time. Good luck in Richmond. What's that? <laughs> I said, good luck in Richmond. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I got monster in my ear. I can't hear much.